Uh, next, we have Thomas, uh, who's title is how do stars get their mass, understanding the origin of MF from the mass distribution, of course. Thomas, uh, the floor is yours. So hello, everybody. Um, I'm Thomas Noni. Uh, I'm postdoc in Mexico. And today, I will talk again about uh, ALMA IMF, so after, the, after Melis and Law. And more precisely, I will uh, talk about the main motivation of the large program, which is uh, the origin of the IMF. So um, the IMF, which is the mass motion of stars at birth, at, at birth is, um, is described at high mass by a power law tail, uh, the famous uh, Salpeter slope of the IMF, which is on this four minus 1.35. And the widely accepted paradigm is that the, the IMF is universal through the Milky Way and possibly through the universe, and that it is linked to the CMF, which is the core mass function. And before moving on, I would just like to give a, a short uh, in presentation or a definition of core. So in this presentation, what I will call a core is a gas and dust over density in a, in a molecular cloud with the potential to form one or several uh, stellar system. And we are talking about objects from 0.01 to 0.1 parsec. And another important distinction for this presentation will be the, 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 that before the beginning of the collapse, uh, the core are called prestellar and they, they are slowly fragmenting and contracting, while after the collapse, the core are called protostellar, and we can detect them by hot core activity and also by uh, ejection, uh, the molecular outflows. So um, as I was saying, the, the idea is that the IMF could be related to the CMF and that core could be the direct mass reservoir available to form stars. And uh, this idea comes from more than two decades of observation, uh, showing a good uh, agreement between the form of the CMF and that of the IMF. And I give on the left two examples. However, most of these studies were limited to relatively nearby star forming region, uh, namely many clouds in the Gould Belt, and uh, also uh, relatively uh, low to intermediate mass star forming region. Typically, we're talking about uh, cores beyond uh, 10 solar masses and star up to uh, four or five solar masses. And more recently, ALMA observation of uh, further on more massive regions brought some evidence of top AV CMF. And this was the context when uh, ALMA EMF started. Uh, so with the main goal to look for temporal and environmental variation of the CMF. So for the temporal variation, um, no, first, for the environmental variation, the the, we mapped 15 clouds among the most massive protocluster of the galaxy, and they're represented by the green dots in this uh, uh, picture, located from 2 to 5.5 kiloparsec. And for the temporal aspect, uh, the clouds have been classified in three categories from young to evolved, based on the one kilometer flux ratio and uh, on free free emission. And if you want more information, you can have a look at the first Alma EMF paper uh, led by Frederick Mott. And in the next part of my talk, I will talk more specifically about three regions in W43, which is located uh, there at the tip of the bar and at 5.5 kiloparsec. So, as has been mentioned before, Alma IMF is a cycle of five project. Um, we have observation 
in mosaic mode, uh, we, in order to map large portion of the cloud and not only its center operations with both the 12 meters, the seven meters and uh, total power. You know, the, and the angular resolution was set to reach a homogeneous spatial resolution of about 2000 AU in all the region. And uh, we have eight spectral windows in band six and four in band three with plenty of, uh, of lines. So Melis mentioned the methyl formate used for hot core uh, study, but we have also tracer of outflows of coarse filament and so on. So since we are in an ALMA conference, I will add a, have a few words about data reduction because for a large program uh, with uh, such a volume of data, it is quite challenging. And uh, in order to, to have an homogeneous and reproducible uh, um, data reduction process, we developed uh, um, the ALMA EMF data pipeline. And it is available uh, publicly. So if you want to use it for your own observation, you can. It is on GitHub. So we started to develop these pipelines for, for the continuum data reduction. And more recently, we adapted it for the line data reduction. So in short, what uh, this pipeline do is to um, merge the different array configuration, do a cleaning using mask, and also the important step of, of self-calibration. And for more information on continuum data reduction, I send you to the second Alma EMF paper um, led by Adam Ginsburg. And for the line data reduction paper, you will have to wait a little more for the publication of the paper led by Nikon Cunningham. So um, this is a slide which summarizes uh, the current and uh, uh, future publication of Alma EMF. I already mentioned these two. And as, as you may see from the title, also we have various publications uh, focused on this region W43. Um, and this is what I'm moving to. So for um, W43 is typically what we could call uh, the, uh, an analogous of uh, the starburst region that some people study in, uh, in other galaxies. And uh, why that? Well, because this is a very uh, dense and massive region uh, with the highest affirmation efficiency. So uh, you, and it already can uh, include a cluster of massive stars. So on this temperature map, you can see it causing this, uh, this uh, hot region. And um, two part of, a, two, well, three uh, part of the uh, 43 have been mapped with, with ALMA, MM1 in the north, sorry, and MM2 and MM3 in the south. So I'm now showing the, the 1.3 millimeter continuum map that we obtain from ALMA MF data. So on the left, MM1, and on the right, MM2 and MM3, which are near, nearby region. And the, all the little ellipses are showing the core, which we extracted using GetSF. And in total, over the two regions, we reach more than 300 uh, cores uh, in a single region. So this is really a, a statistically important uh, sample. And from that, so uh, we can study the comma function. And what we saw is that in both region, the CMF is what we call the top AV, which is significantly flatter than the canonical IMF. So in other words, with an excess of high mass core compared to what we would expect from the Salpeter slope. And uh, one of the next step th that we have done is to separate core uh, between prestellar and protostellar, as I was mentioning before. And this is uh, what I've done in the two regions. So using molecular outflows. So you see now the, on top of the continuum map in grayscale, the contour of uh, blue and red, showing blue shifted and red shifted CO2 to one emission at high velocity 
and in green, the course driving this outflow. And just to, just to give an idea of the complexity of the outflow notification in this region, I'm now showing some zoom in uh, with uh, out information from CO at lower velocity. So using the outflow in this uh, in these two regions and combining the sample, I reach a, a, a sample of from uh, about 80 protostellar cores. The remaining cores, which do not drive outflow or are not tested with the hot core, are assumed to be prestellar core candidate. And so this is a mass versus size diagram showing uh, that uh, one of the things it shows is that uh, the protostellar cores are smaller in size and more massive than prestellar core. And I also highlighted there uh, the high mass prestellar core candidates, which are very rare objects. Um, here is one of the objects that we studied before in MM1, core number six, and two other candidates with uh, lower masses there. So now, when we look again at the core mass function, but this time separating the prestellar core in blue from the protostellar core in red, what we see is that uh, the mass distribution of the prestellar core only is this time consistent with Salpeter, and the massive cores in excess uh, uh, are in their large majority protostellar. So what it suggests, if we, if we assume that it is a time evolution, is that we could have an evolution from a Salpeter CMF at the prestellar stage to a top EV CMF at the protostellar stage. And obviously now the main question is how will uh, the IMF uh, look like? So we don't have direct observation of the IMF in this region, but I would just like to brief, briefly advertise the work done in the paper from Yuan Puto of last year, in which uh, we tested various scenarios of fragmentation and of mass conversion efficiency to see how the IMF could look like. And in summary, in most of the scenario we tested, we saw that the, IM, the IMF in W43 could remain top of So also, what does it tell us about the star formation process, this difference? Well, uh, this dif difference uh, clearly indicates that core need to grow in mass during the protocellar stage and probably from the environment at least. And if you're familiar with the star function model, this fits more within the, this family of model from uh, Bonnell or uh, Vasquez Semadeni. And um, using Alma-IMF observation, we'll be able also to see if this is only a case in the starburst region, W43, or in other high mass star forming regions. And to conclude, I hope that with this presentation and the one from my colleagues, we have convinced you that with ALMA-IMF, we have really a wealth of data to investigate star formation and especially high mass star formation. So you can already have a look at the continuum data. Uh, the line data will soon be published and also stay tuned for um, the publication of the core catalog for the 15 region, which will also show the CMF for the global CMF. And I, I don't have time to leave them all, but uh, we have also various papers which will soon be submit or in, are in preparation covering a broad range of topics. So again, uh, you will see more in the future. And with that, I will terminate. So thanks for your attention. And if you have Great questions. Thanks. Great, thanks, Thomas. Nice time control as well. So. Um, open for questions. I don't see in the chat. And uh, ah, Piyush. Hi, Thomas. Really great talk. Um, I was just wondering if you have looked at the metallicities of these cores and whether you can place any constraints on the carbon or oxygen abundances because we do expect some variations in the IMF with the metallicity as well. Um, I'm being more, more focused on molecular clouds and galaxy. I'm, 
and Milky Way, I'm not so familiar with this kind of study, but to mine, as far as I know, we are not, uh, we have not, uh, no, this is not something that we have, uh, that we have tested. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Sebastian? Yeah, again, so a very congratulations for a very nice talk. Um, I think I already asked the question about the distance to the, the targets, but is it possible to use some kind of relation between the size of the all flows and the, um, the mass of the, the core to get some kind of calibration to get the distance or to, to try to combine everything to get something? So um, Maybe a stupid question, sorry. but. No. Well, no. Actually, with um, we there is no there is no def, uh, defined and calibrated size for the for the outflow. They can uh, and actually it was something that we that uh, that we have shown in uh, in my in, in my first outflow paper uh, in this region is that in uh, in the, in this region the outflow length is more dominated by environment. So if you if you look at outflows in dense regions, they will tends to be shorter. Uh, and in addition, you have some age effect, so um, so we cannot uh, we cannot use. But um, even for the speed, it's the same. The, the velocity of the outflow is the same story. The environment defined, or um, yeah, velocity is the, is the same. And also, in addition to that, we have also issue of the unknown uh, inclination towards mm -hmm. the with respect to plane of the scan. So those are really it's quite complex too. Okay, okay. Well, I was thinking that with so many sources that you can make some statistics or something, but yeah, I understand it's maybe not so easy. Thank you. I should say it's very, very impressive <laughs> that you have outflow. Yeah. I, I, I cannot imagine how it looks like in the cube. It should be very cute. <laughs> Yeah, well, and uh, actually, it was even quite. It was also quite challenging to show in a two D, in a small image, uh, the the all the outflow. And uh, yeah, so okay. this is actually something also that could uh, be investigated more. We are we are just starting to look at outflows uh, in this region, and uh, there is still many more uh, space for detailed study of one of these, one of these, uh, one of these sources. Awesome. I can imagine that if you make a movie of this, it should be very very nice. Yeah. Absolutely. This this yeah, if it's made into a movie or something, it's gonna be interesting to to look at. Yeah. And complicated because the CO the CO line in this region is in a, is also very well. This is a CO is tracing many things on the line of sight. So we have also various contamination. So this is this is great. Yeah. Are you guys actually able to, because you know, in some regions it's quite busy and it's one system on top of another. Are you guys able to disentangle from one um, system from the other in terms of velocity, systematic velocity space, for example? So it, it, well, it depends what you mean by system. What we have in some regions that you need, we have, we have the, the main cloud that we want to observe. And we can have some other cloud in the which can um, do like absor appear in absorption or emission toward the, some of the lines. So we have to this is uh, an issue to take into account. But um, otherwise, we can uh, for each individual for um, well, we don't have velocity information. We don't have the, the velocity information in, in, in molecule for all the cores, but uh, most of the cores that uh, can be detected with the proper velocity in some other tracer and so for that we we can we, we can distinguish them from yeah that would be cool great if no more questions then uh that's thanks thomas thomas again